If you're a coach, creator, or consultant, and you're selling a high ticket offer right now, working to grow your online business, but you feel like your income is on a little bit of a roller coaster ride going up and down with results that are sporadic and inconsistent, I know your pain. Early on in my journey when I was working to achieve my first six figure year, after hitting my first 10K month, the biggest problem I was facing was figuring out how to duplicate that 10K month over and over and over again to get to six figures. At first, it was a challenge. I was going up and down all over the map, and I couldn't really seem to get to the bottom of what was causing it. Up ahead in this video, I want to be uncovering the three keys to creating predictable predictable profits in your coaching or consulting business. All right, so as we get into today's topic, my mission is to get you on the path to building a predictable business. And that's a big reason why we decided to even write and develop our book, The Profit Prediction Formula, which is essentially our blueprint for coaches and consultants to build a predictable six-figure business organically using social media. This book is gonna be available for purchase very, very soon as we released it to beta members a few months back and we are now prepared to launch it publicly here in next month of July, the time of recording this video. But one of the chapters in the book is all around the three critical components to creating predictable profits in your coaching business. So for those of you here watching, I wanna give you a glimpse at how you can start making progress towards this now. And I wanna share with you from experience how I was able to go from inconsistent sporadic income to taking control of my income, control of my growth, and building a predictable six-figure coaching business. So without further ado, let's dive into the three keys to making this happen. Key number one, a great offer. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard this before. You need to have a great offer or a compelling offer to be able to win with your online business. But there's a few components that allow you to actually make your offer compelling itself and actually allow it to resonate with folks in your audience and ultimately allow you to get on the path to more predictable sales. And there's three components I look at specifically to tell, is this a good promise or is this a bad promise and a bad offer? So your promise needs to be simple, unique, and more importantly, measurable. So let's say your promise for your coaching offer right now is, I will help you earn 10K. So when we look at this promise, although it's very short and simple, it actually invites a lot of unknowns and questions that come up for that prospect. We know that lead may be attracted in the idea of taking their business to 10K months. And you stating that you can help them earn 10K is an attractive thing, but there's gonna be some questions that come up with that promise statement, such as how are you going to go about helping me get to this point in my business? And what are the steps we're going to take to get there? So with this particular promise example, although it's simple, it's very unclear and it leads to a lot of unknowns and questions that would leave the prospect or that lead unsure on if this is the right move for them because they don't know what to expect. And when expectations are misaligned going into it, there's a really good chance they're not going to take advantage of the opportunity you're presenting them because they don't know what's in front of them. They don't see the value in you being able to support them because they don't know the steps that you're gonna take them through to achieve that promise and break past the problem that they're facing right now. Second, it's not unique at all. There's millions of people out there promising, I'll help you earn 10K using social media, or I'll help you generate 10K for your online business, or I'll get you to 10K months in the next 15 or 30 days. But if all we're doing is we're building our marketing around just the attractive income, desirable outcome that we're taking them to, but we're not showing them how we're gonna actually take them there, that person is never going to believe us that we're gonna actually be able to help them achieve that result itself. So if we wanna create belief within our leads and actually get them to be interested in joining and actually take that step in joining us in our offer, we have to be willing to show them how we're going to help them. We have to be able to walk them through that process and show them that, hey, this is where you're at now, in my experience, this is what I see for you going forward. And these are the steps we're going to work through over the next three months or six months to achieve this goal. This makes it much more easier for that lead to be able to actually step in and see what you're going to do for them, how you're going to help them, and the path that they're gonna be on if they chose to work with you. So in order to have a strong offer that resonates and converts with our target audience, we need to make sure that the problem that we are solving is something that actually is present within the target that we are serving. From there, we need to make sure that our promise and solution to that problem is something that's positioned in a simple, unique, and measurable way. And when you have a clear promise in place that resonates with your target audience, everything in your business will be easier especially when it comes to marketing and sales. But aside from a clear and strong promise, there's also another very important component within your offer that allows you to get on the path to creating predictable profits in your business. And that comes back to offer economics and pricing. And all this really comes back to at the core is the pricing of your offer. This alone made a massive shift for me and my ability to really level up my income in my coaching business as I was able to increase prices on my coaching offer itself. So for example, let's say right now you're selling a 1K coaching offer and you wanna to get to consistent 10K months. If you wanna to get to consistent 10K months and you're selling a 1K offer, not rocket science here, you know that you need to make 10 sales in order to achieve that 10K month. You need to do that every single month. And this is a big thing for me early on where this became kind of exhausting after a time. When I was selling at the time a 1K commission offer, 
for me, being able to have to create 10 new clients that offer every single month made it a little bit harder to sustain 10K months through that. But as I shift into my own co coaching offer and I was able to raise the prices on my coaching offer after delivering results for my clients and go from charging 1K to charging 2K to charging 3K upwards of 5K, this is where massive shifts start to happen because now rather than having to make 10 sales to hit 10K, in some instances, we only need to make two sales or three sales to hit 10K, which allows us to much more easily hit and sustain the income goals that we're working towards. Key number two, know your numbers and particularly know your CPS or conversations per sale. With this clarified focus, knowing that, hey, we're really working to generate at least 120 relevant conversations this month to put ourselves in a position to hit 10K, now it all really comes back to is what can I do to create those conversations? And we go deep in terms of teaching you how to do that, but at the core, it really is understanding the right types of content to put out to your audience to attract those people into your messenger and in turn, be able to create those conversations. On the flip side, if your content right now isn't bringing you those number of conversations that you need to have to hit your goal, it's up to you to either improve your content to start bringing in more inbound leads or to start focusing more on outbound and prospecting and outreach to make that target happen of your conversation goal. That way that you know, either way, you're in control. Whether it's through you putting out strategic content to create the amount of conversations that you need to create and present the offers that you need to put out to put yourself in a position to hit that sale, or going out and being proactive and having those conversations through outreach, the control is in your court. And that's the real power behind the framework that we teach inside the Power Prediction Formula. But also the power behind understanding and knowing your numbers as well as knowing your CPS or conversations for sale. This is a massive component behind how I've been able to create predictability within my coaching business. If I didn't have awareness around my numbers, I would be basically guessing month after month in terms of what actions and inputs I should be focusing on achieving to hit my sales goal. But this completely eliminates the guesswork puts the control back into your court and gives you a simplified focus to work towards each and every month to guarantee that you're putting yourself in a position to achieve your sales goals. And it makes it so much more easy to actually follow through, do sell, and create more predictable results. Now, there's another component we're gonna talk on next in terms of allowing you to do even more with less, but it all starts here with knowing your numbers. Once we have that strong offer in place, from here, it's really having understanding of how are we converting in our business right now? On average, how many conversations is it taking us to make a sales opportunity? How many offers are we putting out, et cetera. When we're clear on these things, we can step away from just zoning in on the focus and obsessing over the next sale or the next client, and in turn, take a step back and focus on the inputs that lead to that new client in our coaching business. In the simplest terms possible, this is where we're going from getting good to getting smart. Once we're having clarity on the very few inputs that we need to be focused on to drive the results that we want, and we start to have an understanding of what our numbers are and what we're optimizing for, we're getting good. But once we know how to actually optimize that process and do more with less, this is where we're getting smart. This is what this third key is all about. It's taking the clarity that we have now on the few inputs that we're doubling down on to achieve the goals we want and being able to now do less of those inputs while still achieving more results, more growth and more predictability. Now for us to effectively optimize our conversion process, optimize our number of conversations for sale, there's a few factors that come into play, but it's really starting to number one, be aware of where are the blocks in our conversion process now? And how can we eliminate or alleviate those blocks to allow for our conversion funnel to flow more fluidly? Because remember, we can have a block within being able to generate leads, to being able to convert leads to opportunities in Messenger, to being able to convert leads on the phone or convert leads in Messenger directly. The point is with all these stages, there can be micro blocks that basically stop the ability for opportunities to flow through and get to the, the end and actually become a paying client and a closed sale in your business. But once we lift up these blocks, this is where we can start to actually allow people to freely flow through our funnel and see it happen more consistently and more reliably. With the blocks there, it's much more inconsistent and it also requires us to bring more volume of people through. But with us doing more with less and converting at a higher rate, we can bring less people through and they're not getting held up along the stages because we have the process optimized from start to close sale. So with that aside, let's run through a quick real life example of what I mean by this. A client of mine that began to work with me came in where he was closing at a rate of 20%. So basically every one in four calls, he was making a high ticket sale and his sales process was built around offering calls and messenger, booking calls and closing over the phone. Now, his way of generating those prospects to offer calls and messenger and get those calls booked was primarily built upon using cold DMs and cold outreach because 
He w didn't know how to effectively leverage content to pull people out of his audience and take the weight off of him having to focus solely on cold outreach. So there's two areas of improvement that we doubled down on right away when he began working with me. So when we got started together, we focused on optimizing first his lead flow knowing that if we can bring in more opportunities with him not having to rely on cold DMs, this alone is going to lead to more book calls, more offers, more sales in this business and new record months. So by doing this to begin, we started to focus on putting out more strategic content and he quickly saw his ability to go from having to focus on 50 cold outreach conversations a day to now only reaching out to 10 people a day with the amount of leads that he was generating off of his content. Not only that, but the leads that were coming off of his content had much deeper trust with him already. So they were converting into calls and sales in a much shorter period of time than the leads that were coming from the cold DM combos with people that are just getting to know him and allowing him to achieve more sales with less time, less headaches and less effort. But there's always room to optimize it further and further and further to take even more weight off of the process for you. And once that optimization was made, with this client in particular, he had messenger skills that were already in place. So he was successfully able to capture those conversations with folks new, with new leads coming in off of his content, move them into the messenger combo, and effectively offer calls and book calls. And he was doing that at a pretty high rate. So we knew that the next area of optimization and focus wasn't really on improving his ability to book calls because he was successfully doing that. Where the next biggest bottleneck for him was after solving the lead flow problem was the lead conversion problem and optimizing that part of the process. Knowing that he's converting at a 20% rate, we were able to take the next 60 days to focus on developing his sales skills, developing the way that he set expectations with prospects before they got in the phone with him and restructured and optimized the way that he presented his offer on the call. And 60 days later, we saw his closing rate jump up from 20% to now 60%. It tripled within 60 days time, taking him from closing every one in four folks that he spoke to on a call to now closing every three out of the four calls that he had. Comparing that to the big picture before it took him 20 calls to create five high ticket sales and to achieve his income goal. And for him, not only did this mean more control over his business, more control over his income and actually not feeling like he's at the whim of his results, but more than anything came through the time that he was able to buy back by us eliminating the amount of cold DMs that he had to focus on sending every single day to prospect and try to get those calls booked to us also cutting back on the amount of calls that he had to take by improving his closing process allowing him to take half the amount of sales calls than he was before. This gave him back an additional 15 hours in his work week so he could spend it doing the things that he wanted to do, which at the core was a big reason behind why he started his online business to begin with. To be able to spend more time with his kids, with his loved ones and do the things that he wanted to do. And when we aren't clear on the things that we talked on in today's video, our business can easily take control over us. And rather than building the business that we hope to build that was impactful, profitable, and freedom producing, instead we end up becoming a slave to that business and a slave to that asset and feeling like we have to do more and more and more each and every day just to keep up with it. To avoid that in your business, I encourage you to implement what we talked on today with these three keys to creating predictable revenue in your coaching business. But more than anything, I encourage you to click the link in the description below if you enjoyed this video and join the waitlist for our book as we go much, much deeper into the entire process to bringing this to life in your own business so you too can take over the same control and get on the path to building a predictable six-figure coaching business. With that aside, again, I'll drop the link to join the book waitlist in the comments below. We're gonna be launching things very soon. So depending on when you check out this video, that page may be active in the description below as well. But if you're catching this as the video releases, be sure to join the waitlist if you have not yet already, as you will not want to miss out on the details as we open up doors on that very soon. And until next time, if you enjoyed today's video and got value from what we talked on, be sure to smash that thumbs up button before you head out. And if you haven't yet already, hit that big red subscribe button before you go as well, so you're not missing out on any future videos that we drop. Your support means the world to me, so any questions, thoughts, or takeaways that you'd like to share in the comments below, drop them down there below, and I look forward to getting back to you and engaging back in the comment section and ultimately seeing you back on the next video very soon. Thanks again for watching and taking time out of your day to hang out with me in this video, and we'll see you on the next one.